today I'm going to try and build an ESP roving robot, a simple one that can drive around a table or a floor. start this one by repurposing a robot so just in the robot cupboard I've got this little rover here um, which has got um, an elec house board which I've actually not really done anything with yet and I'm gonna take that off um, to put an ESP on so this two-wheel platform is interesting in that as well as having so it's got a caster wheel on the bottom it's got a space here for some Opto interrupted, and what that means is I can actually count how far the wheels have gone. I'm going to need an ESP, it's an L298N motor controller, it's mounted on this PCB. And for prototyping, one of my simple materials, a bit of sticky tack. Okay, I'm going to stick it on just a fairly standard breadboard. There is one, one downside actually to using this Node MCU board which is that it takes up almost the whole space on that breadboard. So I suspect what I'm going to have to do is plan where I'm going to plug everything in, make those connections, and then put this in on top. Okay, there we go, some jump cables. Connection for ground. That is to come out of the connection for voltage in. There's voltage in ground there. Um, and I'm going to need for the motor controller uh, six connections to it. In one and two, set up the direction of the first motor. So one zero for one direction, zero one for the other. And an enable actually does the uh, turning the motor on and off. So this is the PWM, um, and the other one again, it's the same deal. So three, four is the direction of the second motor, enable turn it on and off. Um, it is, there are more efficient ways, I suspect, to connect up motors um, using maybe fewer than six IO pins. Uh, so we'll probably investigate those later. Just test fit, see where everything's gonna sit. Okay, so I'm gonna need to bring down my ground and power connections, push this a bit further down here, that will fit nicely, okay, so my plan for the power, I mean this has got an onboard 5 volt regulator, I'm actually going to be getting 6 volts out of 4 AA batteries, and we should be able to connect this board all at, really all at one end. Um, because I'm using the voltage rails there, so that'll actually be a 5 volt, not a 3 volt voltage rail. And then 2, 14, 2, 17. And then for the last pin, I've actually got to skip to because there's actually a, a 3 volt and a ground before we get to P5. That on the board. So I'm going to just feed through these motor wires. Let's see. See, those are quite tightly down here, so I think the motor control has basically got to go above where the battery comes out. Um, and this can feed over to this side over here kind of conveniently put the uh, fork sticking out but also it means that counterweight of the batteries because there's a possibility when this thing shoots forward and stops that it'll tip without a bit of weight at the back here so we'll have to watch out for that okay so I've got a few blobs of blue tack on here there are some particularly long uh, cable ends there I'll put it in pop it on here ground I'll just make a connection for ground VMS, which is basically voltage in. Okay, and make 
sure those connections are nice and solid. Um, we've got a motor, so these have got incredibly short wires on them, incredibly short. overlap or overhang. Okay, so voltages. Um, we're going to have to run some cables out to power connectors here. I think these orange ones here are of the right length. So there's a 5 volt output here which is regulated on there. And the one that's slightly tricky is actually for ground, this board doesn't have a second ground output, so I'm just going to have to try and get two wires there, two wires, there's one orange one black, into the ground connection. And now the two boards share ground. Okay, I'm going to do a quick walk through the code. Uh, the code is on GitHub, so I'm going to focus on the highlights. First thing I've got here is I've actually set a bunch of functions for initializing, going forward and backwards on a motor, and stopping. Um, and I've stuck the motors into two little structures where I can say what the enable, direction zero, and direction one pins are. Uh, and you'll see how those are used. So. Motors, when controlled from the ESP or the Arduino or other robots, are often controlled using PWM, Pulse Width Modulation, where there is a timer and there is a cycle where the pin is on and where it is off. So the amount of time in each cycle that is on compared to the time when it is off forms a ratio known as the duty cycle. And it is this ratio that says how fast the motor is going compared with if it was just turned on at that voltage. So in the code here, I'm initializing the enable pin, D0 and D1 pins, so they're all outputs. I'm then setting up this enable pin for PWM. So you control these motors by setting what direction it is and then turning the PWM on and off very quickly. So we use that to initialize each motor. We've then got a forward function. So it sets direction zero to one and direction one to zero. Uh, you have to flip these to go backwards. And if you, when you've wired and set up your pins, you find that these are the other way up, just flip which pins you've set in these numbers here. It's very easy. You don't even have to, to break out a screwdriver for that. Um, so we're setting it up. Again, with this clock cycle, a uh, clock speed of 500, which is how fast the cycles are being made. This speed here, which is from 0 to 1023, sets the duty cycle. So the higher this number, the faster your motors will go. If you go too low, you may find they're just going click, click, click and not moving at all. And then start to actually start PWM. Um, stop just tells the PWM to stop. Forward and backward are reverse functions. They do pretty much the same thing. They're very similar. In the main code, we initialize both motors. Notice here, I've said, remember to feed the watchdog. So on the ESP, if you go into a loop and you don't feed the watchdog, it will reset. It's trying to prevent you from accidentally creating a tight loop where you can never reprogram it again or where it's not responding. You're feeding the watchdog to tell it your code is not hung, so it doesn't automatically reset. There's four sections here. I go forward on the first motor, full speed, wait, stop that motor, then clear the timing, the, the watchdog timer. I do the same for motor B, then I go backwards on motor A and backwards on motor B. 
and I'm not clearing Watchdog on final block because my code is now going to finish and exit. Um, I am only using the full PWM speeds here, so perhaps in a later video we'll explore the different speeds we can do with this thing. And all this code is on GitHub. Now let's see how it looks on the robot. I put the code onto the Node MCU as the init lure. Um, and you can see the rewiring where this cable now goes straight down instead of around. So because D0, this pin here, cannot carry PWM, I've had to wire that to D6. Um, and uh, it's all stuck together on the motor board. Now, I'm putting battery in because there's no actual power switch on the thing. Um, and maybe as a future enhancement, then a power switch might be quite nice. Uh, I think at this point it's still going backwards, so I'll have to switch those directions in the code. Um, but, turn it on. And, reset that. Oh, and it tried to drop off the end of the table. Each motor forward and each motor back. Um, and then perhaps we can start to explore uh, in subsequent videos how we can maybe get uh, phone control via Wi-Fi of this. Uh, I don't know why this light is remaining on so that needs to be looked at. Perhaps getting a power switch or perhaps being able to use this breadboard so we can have a way to turn it on and off without pulling batteries out. Um, and we can start playing with sensors on this board. Um, now I've got other ESPs so we might even be able to connect say a controller to another ESP um, so we can make an RC robot or we can have sensors and have this robot do something more active. Um, now I say going backwards because I think this should be the front because we've got what appear to be quite good sensor connection holes on the front there um, and then they can, we can perhaps wire them back into this, uh, this breadboard at the back here um, and bring them into, into the ESP. Uh, but anyway, I think as a first off robot with just a simple uh, simple setup that's pretty easy to make so the stuff you're going to need um, you'll be able to find these robot chassis fairly actually they're becoming fairly common on ebay places like uh, there's a uk robot store cool components um, they're all over and they use these kind of standard motor types look for ones that have the motors with the cables soldered on unless you fancy soldering i mean it's not a big solder job but yeah, um, it's up to you whether you prefer that. And there are models with two sets of motors or one set of motors and a caster. Um, two sets of motors, the theory is it'll be more torquey, but also I found that then you need more batteries and they're more sensitive to PWM dropouts. If you get those motors, they'll come with tired wheels. This particular model has got these little uh, wheels or discs here, which actually give me, um, or could give me, odometry, which is sensing how far wheels have gone. So at some point, perhaps I'll see if I can find an opto interrupter pull it out of an old printer or an old scanner. Um, battery box, you'll be able to get that from Maplin. And uh, you can have a go at being on your own. And yes, okay, I'm prototyping with a bit of blue tack, which is not exactly the strongest material. The battery box keeps dropping off. Um, so I might have to re maybe replace that with uh, a bolt or some, some other way to keep it on. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, please don't forget, subscribe if you like this. Um, and give me a thumbs up if it was fun.